If you came to learn how to identify billfishes or just learn some cool features about them, then you came to the right place. I will give accurate descriptions of the 10 currently recognized species of billfishes, how to tell them apart from the others, and for those of you that want to stick around a bit longer, we'll even do some comparison exercises to make sure you've discovered the billfishes properly. And we'll do this all without using colorations. Hey there, I'm Koa of Koa Nature, where we are always spreading knowledge to be nature heroic for ourselves and our little ones. So let's first quickly go over the basic morphological features that you need to know about billfishes for the purposes of this guide. To refresh your memory on the basic anatomical directions, we note four simple directions. Anterior, posterior, dorsal, and ventral. I'll throw that in the corner. So the pectoral fins are anterior on the body and situated above the dorsally seated pelvic fins. Note that there are two dorsal fins, a first dorsal fin and a second dorsal fin. Similarly, there are two anal fins, a first anal fin and a second anal fin. There is a bill, or an extended growth of the upper jawbone. There is a mandible, or the lower jaw. The caudal keels are seated laterally, anterior to the caudal fin. The preopercle is the most anterior bone of the gill plate, and the opercle is the largest posterior bone of the gill plate. Some might reference this area as the clethrum, which is a bone of the pectoral girdle and often used for the CK measurement for billfishes, or clethrum to keel length. The two bones are in very similar proximity, but I will be referencing the opercle against the position of the branchiostical rays, which are bones supporting the gill membrane. All lengths will be non-contouring, that is, they do not bend to the shape of what is being measured, and they remain straight. Total length is measured from the tip of the bill to the caudal fin. Body length is measured from the tip of the mandible to the middle and posterior end of the caudal rays. Mid body depth is taken at the middle point of the body. Greatest body depth finds the highest dorsal to ventral length. Head length is measured from the tip of the mandible to the most distant point on the margin of the opercle. Bill length is measured from the anterior tip of the bill to the most anterior point of the fleshy margin of the orbit, or eye socket. Fin lengths can be measured by a greatest height, which is a vertical measurement finding the greatest height from the base of the fin to the tip of the lobe, or an anterior height is more often used and more proper. That measures the most anterior margin on the fin to the tip of the lobe. So let me preface the rest of this video for you really quickly. I was doing some casual research on billfishes. Yes, I'm a nerd like that. And I wasn't finding any guides that seem to be consistent and all-encompassing. So yes, I may be a little crazy because this has taken me months to put together the research, the filming, the production, but I feel I've done my due diligence and I hope that it helps you out because we're all about spreading knowledge here at Koa Nature. So fish responsibly and safely. Secondly, the pause button will be your friend. We're gonna move quickly and I will be posting all of this at my website at koa.org slash billfishes in due time. Thirdly, we are gonna be talking about 10 fishes here. I know that sounds weird, but I don't wanna receive any more about saying fishes. I've already written an article and posted a video guide on when to use fish and fishes in all their various forms. So I'm glad we had that chat. Finally, use the comments area below to post any of your questions or comments that I or other YouTubers can look at and examine. After all, we are a community here that have a similar interest in fishes and obviously the billfishes. If you like this video, it's easily saved in your library for future reference. And if you share this video, then you're awesome and sharing some knowledge. Anyways, the billfishes are an awesome group of fishes. They have some of the fastest swimmers color changing capabilities and those sweet bills that many species use to whack and stun their prey. Not to mention a few species can get really big. The problem is with certain species it can be hard to differentiate one species from another. Okay let's get to this. The billfish is comprised of 10 species within two different families. Istiophoridae and the monotypic family Zephyidae. And monotypic just means that there's only one species within that group. So in this case, the swordfish sits all alone. So let's quickly go over the most easily distinguishable billfishes. We're going to start with the swordfish, that sole member of the family Zephyidae. 
Now, this is a circumpolar species, meaning it is found all over the globe in mostly tropical and temperate ocean waters. This is the third largest billfish, and its distinguishing features are it doesn't have any pelvic fins. Every other billfish does. And the pelvic fins on the other billfishes look like dangling noodles on the belly. It only has one caudal keel on a single lateral side, while every other billfish has two. And those caudal keels sort of look like bumpers in a pinball machine. The bill is long and depressed, representing a sword, hence the name swordfish. So this fish's bill resembles a sword more than the other billfishes. And the two dorsal fins are well separated from one another. We could also note that the adults lose their scales and teeth. So really, if you don't see any pelvic fins and you only see one of those bumper looking caudal keels, you've got yourself a swordfish. Easy, right? Next we have the sailfish and as you can see, its name is quite appropriate because it's got that sail-like dorsal fin. And this fish is also circumpolar. It lives worldwide in mostly tropical and temperate ocean waters. Now some of you may be like, whoa, stop, no way. I thought that there was an Indo-Pacific sailfish and an Atlantic sailfish, two different species. Well, that's all changed. Separate teams of researchers have determined with good confidence by genetic analyses that the populations of sailfish in the Atlantic and Indo-Pacific are really just a single species. Though the populations in the Indo-Pacific do tend to get larger. Remember that separate populations don't necessarily make for separate species. So it's important that you know that the systematics and taxonomic classifications of billfishes, it's in dynamic reassessment. And that just means that scientists have spent countless hours of their lives figuring out what species are more related to which. So when you see scientific names that might not be familiar to you or different from what's even on your country's governmental regulation site, it's just because they're updating over time as scientists, especially through modern genetic analyses, are figuring out what species are more related to which and they reclassify all that. So what makes the sailfish stand out? This fish's most easily distinguishable trait is that sail-like first dorsal fin. It's massive, expanding to a greater height than the body depth. And that dorsal fin is usually covered with little spots, but we are trying not to depend on colorations here. Often when these guys are swimming, that large dorsal fin will be folded into a groove. So look for the second distinguishable trait, the pelvic fins. They have very long pelvic fins that almost reach their anal opening. Now let's get into the rest of the istiophore billfishes. This is where it gets a little bit trickier. We're talking about the remaining four genera containing marlins and spearfishes. And genera is just a plural of genus, like in Homo sapiens sapiens. Homo is the genus. Okay, let's divide them up by their location. Let's start with those two circumpolar species that we started with. And now within the family of spearfishes, we have four species, three of which are Atlantic dwellers, the long bill spearfish, the Mediterranean spearfish, and the round scale spearfish. And one of which that lives in the Indo-Pacific, the short bill spearfish. We have two species of marlins within the genus Kajikia, the white marlin in the Atlantic and the striped marlin in the Indo-Pacific. And we have other species of marlins, the black and blue, each within their own genus. The black marlin dwells in the Indo-Pacific and the blue marlin is circumpolar. And again, like we saw with the sailfish, the blue marlin has been described as two different species, the one in the Indo-Pacific and the one in the Atlantic. But remember those fancy smart scientists I was talking about earlier? Well, their genetic analyses have provided no evidence that they're actually different species. So we consider them as one. One species, one love, that's dynamic systematics in action. Okay, so obviously a short bill spearfish looks very different from a black marlin. But what if I put a black marlin right next to a blue marlin? Or a round scale spearfish right next to a white marlin? They look extremely similar. Let's break it down one by one, starting with the species in the Indo-Pacific waters. We have the short bill spearfish, which reaches about 110 pounds or 50 kilos. And you guessed it, 
The most easily distinguishable feature is that nub of a bill. It is the shortest bill proportional to the fish's head from any other billfish. Also notice the short and narrow pectoral fins that are pointed. Some other distinguishable features are a small eye, a clear lateral line, and an anal opening that is far anterior to the anterior part of the anal fin. Next we have the striped marlin. These are fairly large game fish, reaching 224 kilos or 494 pounds. They do have stripes, but so do a lot of other billfishes. So we're being crafty and not looking at colorations. You'll want to notice the tall first dorsal fin that is usually equal to or greater than the body depth. On a larger fish, it's about 90% of the body depth. And we can see that this trait easily separates the striped marlin from the black and the blue marlin. Striped marlin also have a thinner body than the black and blue marlin. Look at the cross sections. The striped marlin is a bit more compressed. We'll also see a distinct lateral line and a lower jaw that is more narrow and elongated. Striped marlin also usually have pointed first dorsal and anal fins. This is convenient if you're comparing to a white marlin, the only other species sharing a genus with the striped marlin. Next we have the black marlin. Now this is the biggest fish within the billfishes, capable of reaching 1,560 pounds or 707 kilos. The females are the ones that get to be that gigantic in size. Black marlin mostly resemble blue marlin, but black marlin have rigid, downward facing pectoral fins that are incapable of folding against the body. Only in the largest of blue marlin can the fins not be folded against the body but they are still easily distinguishable from the black's downward facing rigid pectoral fins. Also notice that the black marlin has the smallest first dorsal fin in proportion to the highest body depth. Black marlin also have a deeper head, as we can see from the nape to the branchiosical rays. Also, if you have a young black marlin at about a meter in size, the bill will be well developed already, whereas the blue marlin at the same size will not yet have a well-developed bill. Next we have the blue marlin. Now this fish gets pretty much as big as the black marlin, weighing up to 1400 pounds or 635 kilos. And this is the fish that Hemingway wrote about in The Old Man in the Sea. And that's Hemingway right there with a bunch of big blues. And that's Hemingway with some sailfish. And I will briefly mention that the populations in the Atlantic and Pacific tend to differ by the appearance of the lateral line. The Atlantic population has a more reticulate pattern while the Indo-Pacific population has simple loops. But the lateral line system becomes very difficult to see in adults. We can usually tell immediately a black from a blue simply from the pectoral fins. Remember that the black has a fixed rigid downward facing pectoral fin on each lateral side. And I want to add something about a comparison that we can look at on the dorsal and anal fins. If we look at the blue marlin's second dorsal fin, this will be slightly posterior to the second anal fin. And in the black marlin, that second dorsal fin is slightly anterior to the second anal fin. And the blue marlin also has the posterior portion of its branchiostical rays, these bones covering the gills, sitting closer in alignment with the preopercle, that first curved bone of the gill plate. Where on the striped marlin, these posterior ends of the branchiosical rays align more with the opercle. And again, I want to add something relating to the posterior ends of those branchiosical rays. And I couldn't find a publication on this, but it does seem to hold true that the black marlins, posterior ends of those branchiosical rays are further away from that preopercle than on the blues. On the blues, they really seem to be in line with that preopercle. But again, I didn't find a published paper on this, so if you know of one, definitely post that in the comments below. And like the black marlin, the blues have the steepness to their head and also the thick, rounded body. Okay, let's now look at the four species in the Atlantic waters. I'll introduce them individually and do some side-by-side -side comparisons. Let's start with the longbill spearfish. This is a smaller fish than any of the marlins, but the largest within its genus, reaching about 127 pounds or 58 kilos. This fish is distinguishable from the other species in the Atlantic waters by examining that first dorsal fin, which 
at its high interior point drops about halfway after and maintains that decent height for most of its duration along the body. We'll also notice the bill is long, usually equal to or longer than the head length. The first anal fin is usually pointed. The pectoral fin is long and wide, about 18% of the body length. The head profile is fairly straight. And with all species within the genus of Tetracturus, or these spearfishes, the anal opening is far from the anterior end of the first anal fin. With this species, it is about three quarters or equal to the height of the anal fin, sometimes greater. Next, we have the Mediterranean spearfish, which lives in the Mediterranean Sea, which we can easily glean from that name. And it rarely ever ventures out too far from the Mediterranean Sea. We'll look at this next to the longbill spearfish to examine the differences. This fish has a fairly short bill and has short and narrow pectoral fins. The head profile is also relatively straight like the other spearfishes. And the last spearfish in the Atlantic is the round scale spearfish. Now, this species has been sort of an enigma for a long time. It has often been confused with white marlin and often it has been called a hatchet marlin or a blunt fin spearfish. Be it as it is, there's still an ongoing scientific investigation to determine if a hatchet marlin truly exists or whether it's just a putative species. Where putative just means that it's generally accepted to be true, but there's no scientific evidence yet saying, okay, we think this really is a species. But don't worry, some smart scientists are out there working on it right now. Anyways, the round scale spearfish. I'm going to bring this up with the white marlin because these two are often confused and we can really see the differences. When comparing these species, don't look at the shape of pectoral fins and don't look at the shape of the dorsal and anal fins. Both white marlin and round scale spearfish can have rounded or blunted fins. Their similarities, they both have first dorsal fin high at the interior that then drop off relatively low. They both have fairly long bills and pectoral fins. So to tell them apart, there are three distinct morphological features that we can look at to differentiate them. Find those branchiostical rays we talked about earlier. The white marlin's posterior ends of the branchiostical rays will be more in line with the preopercle, that first bone of the gill blade, while the round scales branchiostical ends are more in line with the opercle, or the backbone of the gill blade. Next, Check out the anal opening. Remember that all species within Tetrapterus have an anal opening far from the anterior part of the first anal fin. If the anal opening is 50% to 75% of the anal fin height, then it's a round scale. If that percentage is less than 50%, you have yourself a white marlin. And don't use a fixed length. There are a lot of sporting fishing sites out there that offer incorrect information. You're safer using a percentage. So again to add, I found separate studies that described how to measure the anal fin opening, anal fin height relationship, one of which looked at the greatest height of the anal fin there, and one that measured the anterior anal fin height. And so both ways will provide very similar results, but I'm gonna suggest that you go with a recent and robust data source from one study that was measuring the anal fin height. And that really is a way that ichthyologists studying billfishes should measure. So that's from the anterior margin of that first anal fin to the tip of that anal fin. So I suggest measuring that way. The round scale also has a stippled appearance or something that looks like it was painted with dots because of those rounded scales. And the scales between the two species can really be a definitive trait to differentiate them. This is done by removing the scales about midway down the body, by the pectoral fin, uh, and about two centimeters above or below the lateral line. Accuracy is important here. The round scale has broad curved bases with multiple points, and white marlin have narrow bases with single points on those scales. Unless you're a researcher, and I didn't make this video for researchers, you don't need to be pulling any scales. So, I don't even know why I told you that. You should just be able to tell the difference by looking at the branchiostical rays and that anal opening. And even though we're not depending on colorations here, I want to quickly add that the round scales 
and the white stripes will fade after death. With the striped marlin, when they die, they have unique, very conspicuous stripes that are distinguishable. That can help if you're looking at a photo of a fish that someone's caught and put on display. Wink, wink. Okay, wow, thank you for watching. That was a lot of fun. I think we covered that quite well. If that was too complex, you let me know. If that was too easy, you let me know. You just let me know whatever. So go now, share this with your buddies. Tell them that Koa has made an awesome identification video for the billfishes. There's a share button around there somewhere. I don't know, you're smart, you can figure it out. Also, you can find Koa Nature on Patreon. You can be a part of Koa Nature's spreading of some great information, and that's doing something positive for this world. Bye. Wait, why are you still here? Oh, right, the, the comparison exercises. Okay, I almost totally forgot that. Let's do that. Okay, so I have two photos that I found online, and they don't have a description of the uh, location or the fish species. So we're going to look at these fishes, or maybe we're going to look at these fish. We don't yet know if they're separate species, and we're going to see what we can figure out using some deductive reasoning. So I'll go through these first two photos with you, and we'll figure it out. And then I'm going to not say a word and post fishes, but I'll give you a... Uh, a word bank with all the species names and then I'll start highlighting parts of the fish that is on the screen so that you can make an educated guess as to what species that is. Right so this first image is of a lady on a wharf with a fairly big fish and we can sort of see pelvic fins but I'm fairly certain those two dark spots are caudal keels. So we can eliminate the swordfish and looking at the dorsal fin we can clearly see this is not a sailfish and it doesn't look like any of the spearfishes. So now we are left with choosing from the four marlins. That dorsal fin is way too small to be either the white marlin or the striped marlin. And really, it's small for a blue marlin. But we should look at those pectoral fins. Yep, those pectoral fins appear to be sickle-shaped and pointing downwards, which is the dead giveaway of the black marlin. And I'm betting this is a black marlin. Also, looking at the posterior ends of those branchiostical rays, they aren't very close to the preopercle, and they do appear to be more adjacent to that opercle. And so finally, looking at the alignment of the second anal and dorsal fins, this second dorsal fin appears to be slightly anterior to the second anal fin. This looks to be a black marlin. I think this fish is a black marlin. Okay, so what else we got? Okay, here's another photo. So to kick out the swordfish, if we see two caudal keels, it's not a swordfish. Well, that's hard to tell, so we should look for some pelvic fins. Yep, 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 there are pelvic fins. This is not a swordfish. Looking at the dorsal fin, this doesn't look to be like any of the spearfishes. And that dorsal fin has some good height. I mean, it's definitely not a black marlin. Nor do I think it's a blue marlin. Really, right now I'm leaning towards a white marlin and a striped marlin. And there are a few clues to separate them. First off, the first dorsal and anal fins are pointed. So we know that striped marlin have pointed fins and white marlin have rounded or truncated fins. And secondly, those branchiostical rays appear to be long and more in line with the opercle than the preopercle. And that is the trait of the striped marlin. But that head is hanging sort of askew and can't really get a good vantage on those branchiostical rays. A part of me wants to say that this is a blue marlin, because that is close to a record striped marlin if it is one. But again, that first dorsal fin is so long, it's pretty much the exact height of the deepest body depth. And those branchiostical rays, I just can't let go of that. Even though this head is off, its axis, they just don't appear to be really adjacent to the preopercle. And that body just doesn't appear to be thick enough for a marlin of that length. But again, we are only looking at a, a lateral view. And we can also note if we want to add in a little bit of coloration that striped marlin get these sort of unique conspicuous stripes that appear after death. So my guess is a striped marlin, but I want to hear some comments on this if you disagree. All right, I'm not going to say a word now, and you are going to begin. Uh, I'll give you six seconds or so to look at the images, and you just guess, and then we'll move from there. Do like five or so.
Okay, wow, you stuck around and did all of those exercises. That's great work. Subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. And uh, share this video with your fishing homies or whomever. Be sure to check out some of my other videos like What is Nature? And I'm going to be posting a lot more about reconnecting my fellow millennials with nature. So I hope you take a gander at those and get outside. But if you're fishing, you're probably doing a good job of getting outside already. You can find Cohen Nature on Patreon if you want to be a part of something great here at Cohen Nature. And just keep loving the beautiful chaos of nature. Be nature heroic and spread some knowledge. Thank you for watching.